Hey there, it's Strongy with more World of Tanks. This is a battle in the bat chat, 12 ton. I've actually uh, been getting a lot of daily doubles in this tank because... I don't know, getting a little bit close to the AMX-30. But... Yeah, I don't know. I've always been a big fan of French light tanks, but for some reason I've been having some weird ups and downs with this tank and... Uh, well, this was definitely a good match I've had uh, a couple of days ago. So we're here on Serene Coast in a tier 10 match. So uh, not really good for me when it comes to the matchup. So let's see uh, what we can do. So I usually don't really go to this spot. But it's like a spot I mostly forgot over here. We can probably get a few spots over uh, on the other side of the uh, medium flank here. I'm just gonna see if it still works because it's been a long time since I used this. Oh, I see an object 907, and uh, at this moment I was thinking, uh, well, you know, I can shoot this side, but let's not yet. I don't want to give away my position. But that guy obviously uh, had six cents, so I'm kind of react uh, and turn his vehicle. And uh, something I usually do as well is uh, when I'm in a matchup like this, especially with a light tank, I'm loading some APCR. Now, at the bottom you can see I have my APCR re ready for my next clip because I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this is a tier 10 match. And I don't want to be uh, <clears throat> trolled by the uh, weird Russian armors of the uh, 907 there. Or maybe anything else like an IS-7 uh, that I may encounter, which is on the uh, heavy flank here. But yeah, here I decide to shoot. Uh, seeing the AMX is like kind of behind bushes, knowing it's probably safe for me. And that's kind of the thing I do when passive scouting. I, I do, you know, sometimes want to shoot, but only if I'm sure I'm not going to get spotted. Like for example, this AMX here. Uh, he's behind some bushes. These don't have much view range to begin with. So I felt pretty good shooting him in the side. Now, I'm not sure if he spotted me or not, because that was a pretty late reaction. I think that could have either been the 1390 that just got killed, or um, maybe it was the AMX, I don't know. Maybe it's because he was driving backwards and suddenly he drove out of a bush and had line of sight. But yeah, I got spotted, I uh, drive away, kind of want to help out with this 907 here, have my APCR clip loaded, because, you know, it's a tank of two tiers higher and it has a lot of troll armor, so uh, here I go in trying to get him in the side using my auto aim and pen two shots and he gets taken out by our FV4202 so uh, that's a good start because looking at the team matchup at the beginning you know they have a 907 that's a very scary tank uh, but now their 907 is dead their IS-7 is dead as well so it's looking pretty good over here um, they don't really have many other mediums just the Pantera and that's pretty much it when it comes to mediums. And we have the Action 10 uh, supported by the FV. Now the Action 10, you know, pretty good on hull downing, but I still think the uh, object could have been uh, something dangerous for him. Now I go around here trying to get this AMX, and my plan works. I got around him, got a couple of shots out, and, you know, got rid of a very dangerous opponent over here. Uh, meanwhile, the Waffentrager Panzer four gets uh, spotted in the background you know also being a very dangerous target and I'm getting ready with my clip I actually wanna you know kinda take him in the side or in the rear or, uh, but he's beyond cover so I decided to go for the Panthera here instead my main goal was here to focus on the uh, buff trigger but yeah he eventually was too far and I got hit by RT the Pantera hits me not looking good artillery took a big chunk of health off of me 436 damage with that shell sadly and uh, so yeah, I retreat again while reloading Pantera gets killed that's a good thing and I'm like on 335 health so pretty much a one-shot for most enemies looking at the enemy enemies that are still alive only the uh, HWK can not one shot me. All the other tanks can. So here comes the Death Star 2. Uh, I don't know where some of those shells went. They just seem to disappear for some reason. But uh, yeah. I'm not really feeling sure how to uh, handle here. Um, 
my main concern now was trying to flank the FE to, you know, hopefully do something here. So now I'm loading two HE shells because I'm thinking of going to that FE, but now I'm looking again and that HWK is uh, way too close for me to, you know, safely go uh, to the FE. So I'm loading back to AP again. A lot of shell management over here. Even though he only has, you know, a lot of uh, low amount of health, still the AP was useful there for going through that uh, car there. And now with him out of the way, I load back to a high explosive right away. Now why am I loading high explosive? Well, obviously that FV has a paper turret, so I know, you know, at least I'll be able to empty my high explosive uh, magazine on him in the turret. That'll do a lot of damage. That's you know, a difference of uh, regular 170 alpha to 260. So that's an increase of 90 damage, you know, times 4. You're gonna get, uh, quick math, 360 damage. More than usual, I believe. So that's, uh, you know, that's pretty good. So with my HE loaded, I try to find a safe route to this FE, but uh, I think I should have probably gone around. Uh, no, well, well, I'm not sure. The yeah, Scorpion could have had aim, but maybe the, from the north, I wasn't really sure where to go here. I find the FE here, and Sully moves forward. I didn't expect him to react that quickly, but he derps his shell. And now I'm able to just empty my magazine in his turret there, doing a lot of damage to him. And, uh, yeah, now this guy is, is in a pretty fast hull. But he did just shoot. I, I wasn't sure if I'm gonna be able to out-reload him or not. Because uh, I do have a magazine. But I do get behind him. Just in time. And I can just literally empty my second magazine. Didn't have any HE left, but that was needed. I finished him up with the AP shells. And, yeah, I think that was pretty nice. Now over here, this Scorpion G just comes around the corner. I wanted to shell him with my last shell, but that sadly didn't work out, so now I have to reload again. But, uh, yeah, I kind of <laughs> went back quickly enough to just uh, narrowly avoid his shell. Now I'm just gonna wait till I'm fully loaded uh, to see if I can still help taking care of this Scorpion G. Now I'm loaded. Carnarvon is in front of me, and do I get the kill? We do get the kill, and oh, I, I just now realized that the Progetto actually wanted to ram him. Um, so yeah, uh, he's... Sin... what's his name? Sinisa1389. He's probably never gonna watch this video, but uh, <laughs> my apologies. I did not mean to uh, deny you your ram kill. I did not see that. I just went around the corner and shot the uh, scorpion as quickly as I could just to do some more extra damage so yeah, my apologies there and uh, yeah I drive into the cap <laughs> in the hope for maybe a few extra uh, cap points or something I, I don't know let's check that and the uh, stats screen over here um, which uh, was an ace tanker I think it I'm not sure if it was my first ace tanker or not but it was an ace tanker, and it was also my first mark of excellence, which is nice. Uh, fighter medal and fire for effect. I uh, got 50 bonds from a mission and 107,000 credits over here. I think that's because of a mission. Uh, 4,352 XP. It's good. Look at the team here. Sorted by XP. I'm on top here. And this is, you know, this is some of the best things because we all, you know, get frustrated by the matchmaker. It's like, ah, oh, bottom tier, bottom tier. But once you're on top of XP and that, well, not damage, we're actually second place. The yeah, i7 was first. But once you are on top with XP, with a tiny little tier 8 light tank, it does feel much better than being some kind of tier, top tier tank just wrecking everyone. You know, that doesn't feel special. But once you're in a inferior tank like this, you really do feel special. So that was very satisfying to pull off. Very happy. And those are just the best games, you know, when you're bottomed here and you kick some ass. And, uh, yeah, I got some extra credits over here for a mission. And... <laughs> mm, yeah, there was also a mission completed that gave me some XP. And it was daily double, so yeah. Um... That was pretty much it. Bottom tier ace tanker. 
ma metal. Uh, I, I'm just a big fan of uh, bottom tier ace tanker matches. Those are the best, I think, and make you feel awesome, you know? It feels like, you know, you were in such a bad tank compared to the three top tiers and the uh, five uh, tanks that are one tier above you. And then you just stand out on top, you know. It, it just proves you that you, you're not always useless as a bottom tier. Often it might feel that way, but if you just have it your way, you can be helpful and kind of do some sneaky stuff. So yeah, bad chat 12 ton, bottom tier ace. I hope I get the AMX 30 soon. I'm getting closer and closer. I think I still need some, like, 50k or something like that. But yeah, it's a very expensive tank to research because you're going from a tier 8 light tank to a tier 9 medium and that's just very expensive because it always gets more expensive when you switch tank class. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.